That's pretty accurate. Yeah. Juice! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reacts with Corbin. I'm Rick. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, for more juicy content. That was specifically what, because, you know, we've traveled a lot together. We've stayed in places together. That's pretty much spot on to the sounds Corbin makes when he's in the bathroom. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, more juicy content. Page for all Threads. Threads. Like button. Today, You're just going to forever call it Twitter, aren't you? Yes. No. Are you going to forever correct for some weird reason, even though you're not on it? Well, I just find it weird that you, what other businesses do you refer to by their former names? Do you, do you, do you still call it HBO Max, even though it's just now Max? I call it HBO. Yeah, that's what I figured. Why wouldn't I? It's HBO. They were fucking stupid for changing it. The HBO brand is way bigger than the... So was Twitter, I agree, but that's no longer the business name. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> And nobody else does except for you. No, 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 that's not true. Yeah, everybody you, you, on Twitter still calls it Twitter. Because you, 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 I've, I've, we've read, talked about I it. I read a lot of Twitter. read a lot of news. News doesn't mean people call it that. It does when the news stories are talking about that. No, yeah, no. Absolutely yeah, true. not. True. You're not even on fucking Twitter. So Stop what? talking about it. Why does that annoy you so much? Because you keep fucking talking about it. <laughs> Today we got a Karen Johar interview <laughs> with Film Companion. Uh, yeah, they're still called Film Companion. Well, yes, with uh, Anupa Chopra, which yeah. is actually, this is actually, just happened a few days ago. Uh, or, or the, at least it, it was posted a few days ago, and so it's post Rocky or Ronnie coming out. If you haven't seen a Rocky or Ronnie review, go watch that. I loved it. Rick liked it. Nowhere near as much as I did. Um, but Yeah, it was a, mine was a lowercase like. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I love this movie, um, and a lot of people sent us this interview because he goes in depth about... Ranveer, Alia, and obviously Great. everything else as a filmmaker and all that. So we got this sent this quite a bit. Um, and if this is in two parts, I'm sorry, uh, it's a long video. So sometimes people don't like long videos, and so they post them in two times. I don't know yet. It might be in one part. Here we go. <laughs> Rocky needed to be this lovable that's the greatest synopsis of a film I've <laughs> ever heard. Because it had to. Um, and I've been feeling this burst of anxiety for the last year, and I have been addressing it, but it was at its height at the time of the release week, you know, so... Um, it usually is. For a that morning, uh, when, uh, when the film released, I just said, I have to just... It's out there now. There's nothing I can do. I just have to, like, you know, hope for the best. Yeah, yeah. And how are you feeling right now with... The box office with the rave reviews. What's what's going on in your head? I mean, I I know. I mean, I've spoken about this to you. Uh, the box office is lovely and it's gratifying and it's growing from strength to strength and it's making me smile. I have never received these kind of reviews. I'm not used to them. <laughs> you know, I'm not used to being reviewed well. Like, you know, there's always a certain level of polarization when my films come. I love that. You either get the two stars and some three and a halves and fours or threes and or you get like bashed completely and I go back to all my movies and I read those reviews. I think my name is Khan got some good reviews and that time it was like uh, like I would say 60 to 70 percent review positive kind of zone. This time there was just like good reviews everywhere and I was like what is happening? Like, you know, what did I go and make? And <laughs> I'm not supposed to be reviewed well. I actually, I, I guess there weren't a lot, but I read two or three negative reviews from India, so I don't know. Uh, Most are positive. I'm not used to Anu liking my film. I'm not this used is to, not true. Uh, I mean, yes, I know, but you liked him in retrospect. Uh, but like, this time you liked him in the, in the current mode. And then everyone at Film Companion liked it. I was like, uh, uh, I, I asked you for Rahul Desai's number and I haven't yet to speak to him. We missed each other because I was like, Rahul Desai liked my film. I'm like, I went to the office and I was like, Mayank Shekhar liked my film and everyone liked my film. Then people are writing columns on it. And I was like, and I would go back to where the journey and everything began. But like, I was, so at one point, Apura was trying to track the box office collections. But as a filmmaker and as an artist, I was kind of so happy to revel in this uh, uh, critical love. Uh, because I felt like when never had it before. called me and said, I've seen your film twice, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> to 
see this because <laughs> I love that for him. I'm like, and in the same breath, I got a call from Guru Uncle, uh, Mr. Rakesh Roshan. So I was like a mm. massive mainstream filmmaker, yeah. and the 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 real movement, the alternate movement poster boy. Right. Both call me one after the other. How is this possible? Like, what? I and you know, when I was just getting these calls, I was like, for a minute, it took me a while to. Uh, I was absorbing. Yeah. You know, I was really absorbing, and I was trying to kind of figure out. Um, what was going on? <laughs> I was like, like this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> and these things happened, you know. I I thought, you know, oh my God, they're going to talk about oh the same song and dance and a designer clothes and all of that is of course there. Sure. But I'm hoping they see that you know because they I always feel like I try to do stuff but it never gets acknowledged. Hmm. Well, it came 2023, the July 28th, and good things happen on that morning. So yeah, that's why I was feeling surprised, shocked, and elated. I want to start with what I love most in the movie, which is Rocky Randhawa. Uh, yeah, yes. uh, he is just fabulous. I mean, we all fell in love, yeah. right? I want to understand where did he come from? What was your brief to your writers, to Ishika, to Ranveer's Shashank, brain. to Sumit, uh, about so, creating this man? So, um, you know, in the pandemic, when I decided that I had to put Takht on hold and I wanted to write a love story, um, um, I used to be a lot on the gram. You know, and there was uh, a lot of these West Delhi influencers who, you know, who were kind of speaking and uh, they would, of course, be content creators as well as influencers. And I was very, very amused by how they were. They were so full of life and they were joyous and yet saying the funniest things, you know. And and uh, so I think Rocky came from there. I always wanted to talk about, uh, see, I, then it came about like talking about a love story that was not about essentially like people kept thinking it was like two states initially yeah, yeah. Um, because that's about two different communities like you know then you're talking about the south indian community and the punjabi mine was never about that mine was about patriarchy and matriarchy mm. it was always the the clash of the two yeah. where the punjabi family are essentially patriarchal in nature even though they're led by women yes yeah. even though they're led by women which is what I right. brought the into irony. kind of yeah. the, bring in the irony, yeah. and then of course we all know about Bengali families and how matriarchal they are, and how beautiful that is. Um, that is the core thought, and then I went back into a personal story, which I don't want to speak about. It's about the family huh. uh, that had an instance that then I put into the film, which formed the crux of the Dharamji and the Shabanaji love story. Right. So when all that came together. Rocky needed to be this lovable. Hmm. He had to be poo, but updated. <laughs> I think, I think he's the most charismatic character you created after poo. Yeah, so it was he, he was like it is, he yeah. was the male poo, right. and he was like the Ken to Barbie, but like borrowing from poo, who is Barbie. Also, right. You know, so right. it's like it's all ironical that Barbie is out here, but like he was like the perfect kind of Ken who was, had rough edges. War, I, I always, I'm, I'm, I'm always very um, amused and impressed by the gym culture, you know, because I feel like boys who go to the drinking. gym, huh. like they, I feel like they only talk about that, you right, know. Right. And I, so I wanted him to be a gym boy. Hmm. I wanted him to be, um, you know, but I wanted to be golden hearted, like he would do banda hai, you know, like dost hai, like you know, sabka yaar hai, you know. Yeah. And he's he's into his BFF and he's into the family and he's full like you know. Chati, you know, like Thaan, Sina Thaan ke, he's everywhere. Yeah. But he is the type who will go to Emporium Mall and shop. Right. Like, you know, his and buy out. everything. And buy everything branded. Because that's what he thinks is cool. Yeah. You know, so he'll wear Gucci on his sleeve, but he also has his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. And that's where he was always. So that was how Shashank and Ishita and Sumit collectively kind of brought Ra Rocky Randhawa to life, you know. Um, but the important thing was never should he come across annoying, never should he come across like he's grating on your nerves and right. overdoing it. Yeah. It's a fine line, right, with a yeah, character like this. It is. If you go the other way, you can be absolutely annoying and over the top. Yeah. It's true, Ranveer's genius that he... I'm going to come to that because it's such a match of actor and character. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, how did you, what was your brief to him? Because he is energetic, he is flamboyant, but he doesn't cross the line. How did you balance that? How did I he do it? I have no credit to take for that. Ishita wrote some great dialogue, firstly. Okay. She is from Delhi. Huh. She's half Punjabi, half Bengali. Oh! Grown up in Delhi. Huh. So the dialogue uh, came from her. Uh, Shashank has grown up in Kolkata. Huh. 
you know, Sumit is Bengali. Right. So it was a clear writer's room of like people who have seen these people. Mm. Uh, so uh, the idea was to make Rocky always lovable and vulnerable and obviously clueless about the world. Yeah. He really doesn't know his politics. He doesn't know yeah. about doesn't anything. Care. And he doesn't care because yeah. that's not what his his aim is like, you know, to kind of run the family business and just kind of be himself, ride yeah. his Ferrari and just like, you know, uh, do what he has to do. So I think everyone got that brief and that mm. memo. Mm. But when we gave it to Ranveer and he heard the dialogue, when we were on a recce, you know, for three weeks in Delhi, uh, Ranveer was with me right through those three weeks. He, on a recce. On a recce. He had nothing to do. Recce? Yeah. What's recce? He would meet those Instagrammers that we had a whole, long list of people, including Yuvraj, who's also a content creator and has was with us on set right through. Um, he would speak to them. He would pick up lingo. He would like absorb. He would go everywhere. He would, Ratko, he would even be driving around Delhi and just getting the flavor. I don't know what he was doing, but he had a process. He was there in Delhi right through my Reiki. Like he never came on the locations, but he was in the hotel working with the team. Maybe it's the location scouting? Content creators, influencers, getting the line. He worked it. He created the Rocky Randhava you see is is a lot on paper, but it's a lot to do with him. Oh, yeah. Did he no. improvise lines? Yes, yes, many of them, because like he had picked them up from here and there, yeah. and you know he would like improvise them. Yeah. Uh, never veered away from the script, but it. Th but the lines were intrinsically very funny. Also, you know, they are very funny. Yes. So he had a lot to play with in any case. Right. But he brought in some of the, you know, like the little bit of the Delhi lingo that he picked up, yeah. picked up, and um, he just brought a lot of that of his own self. Mm. Um, in many ways, Rocky is an extension of Ranveer's um, personality. Yeah. Uh, but it's the it's an OTT version of him also. Right. But also Ranveer is an OTT Ranveer has, is is not like this all the time. Yeah. This is his persona out there. Yeah. He comes here. If he comes to the film companion office, he'll be like he'll own the room. Yeah. But otherwise, he'll vanish for twelve hours and he'll be in his on his own in his thoughts. Like I always tease Ranveer, I don't know how to get in touch with him because you send a message, you don't know when that reply will come because he's thinking, he's absorbing, he's he was he used to like literally sit for 10, 10 hours on his own just with the character. I I don't know what he does, but like when he comes on set. And I have to tell you uh, an anecdote. The first day we shot with him in character was the first scene he meets Rani in the office. Yeah. By mistake, Love that scene. he had a feeling we were shooting another scene. <laughs> so he was like, oh, I'm, I'm not prepped for this scene. This is the biggest scene. It's my first scene. I'm meeting Rani for the first time. So I was like, yeah, but we're shooting this. I just want you to yeah. learn your lines. He said, no, I know my lines, but yeah. I, I need to prep. Yeah. And I realized he was very hyper. So I went up to him and said, what happened? So he's like, you know, when you prepare for history, and someone tells you the exam is geography, that's what I'm feeling like right now. So I said, okay, take your time, take four hours, we'll yeah. take a break. Yeah. Uh, he went, I don't know what he did, he came back and... How does that happen? The scene. I don't know. Boom. Like it was done. And when we were yeah, on the monitor, I was like, God, he's got it. He's just got it. it probably makes sense for the lead in the film Adina, though, because Vicky, uh, was just it might have just been a mix up. He might have, somebody might have told him something. Turn your eye towards him, you'll see that he's doing equally hilarious things. <laughs> and, and because of Alia's sheer genius, she was organically reacting to them. Because it was, it, you must also say that because of Rani's reactions, Rocky actually comes across even more intriguing and funny. Yeah. Because she's giving really like, without giving like over the top reactions, she's really looking like he's kind of hot. Yes. But he's uh, like a, a creature, <laughs> but he's kind of sexy in his own way, is what the look she gave. Oh, he's very uh, sexy. I, wanted, I, I told her, I said, she said, what do you want me to do? I said, I kind of want you to think you're turned on at this point. Yeah. But you don't want to address it because it's kind of like, like you won't be able to admit to yourself that you're being attracted to a man like this. Right, right. You know, the dance that Ranveer and Tota Roy Chaudhary do mm. is just dolare dola. Yeah. It was just <laughs> so spectacular mm -hmm. and, and just so exuberant and defiant and joyous. What was it like to create that? Firstly, um, there are two homages I have I've, uh, uh, paid two filmmakers. One is Yash Chopra with Tum Kya Mile. Uh, I wanted a Yash Chopra snow jacket, saris, so, where's the chemistry? Where's the chemistry? Actually, Where's the chemistry? Inspiration, let me just be more honest and say copy. I copied a Yashtubra song <laughs> like I copied a Sanjay Bansali. Right. Set. right. Uh, <laughs> my brief to Amrita was let's do a Sanjay Bansali. And this is in. We pointed that out. Yeah. 
in the way that one would say it with a lot of love and respect, we all know it's a copy. I mean, it's copied. It's very much Sanjay Bansali's aesthetic. It's not mine. It's his beautiful aesthetic that I've copied. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to say it, put it on a record. And I don't want anyone to say that I in any way thought that I was doing something different. No. But the sequences was beyond the set. Yeah. It was much more than what was the, the aesthetic of the, of the set. Yeah. Uh, it was never about, the set had to look like that because I wanted that to the naked eye. It had oh, to look beautiful, brilliant set. Bansali-esque. Mm. Uh, that to me was just the part B of it. The part A was the, the, the song, Dola Re Dola, is to subvert it and to kind of make it, um, because it's about also things that I have believed in personally. As a child, um, I was very effeminate and I used to dance um, mm. in my own room to Hindi film songs, to Lata Ji's songs. And my dad thought it was great. Like he used to think, see me mm. dance on, uh, you know, Dafli Wale, and I used to do the Jaya Prada part, yeah. you know, yeah. and I used to pick up the step and, you know, I was doing my step and my father used to watch and clap. And every time his friends came, uh, he would say, Karan, wo dance the house of yeah. and he mm. would put on the song and I would dance. That's wonderful. And no one told me that there was anything wrong with that at that time. So I grew up thinking, this is fine. Much later when you go to college and you realize that you carry that through mm. uh, and you do those moves and people look at you and laugh. Yeah. and um, you're called all kinds of things and you know there are terms used and it stayed in my heart mm. you know because I feel like I grew up with that feeling that I was laughed at for my body language or for my way of being uh, breaks my heart somewhere Tota's character is is borrowed from my childhood you know and my and so when he says Hunar ka koi gender nahi hota yeah. um, I believe that I believe that so I felt that Rocky's coming around had to happen because the most so-called misogynist, macho man, him doing Kathak, who when you show in the Punjabi sequence, everybody, when, when all the family, the, the Sangeet people laugh, yeah, yeah. that's what 90% of people would do if you saw a man, in, people who are not culturally inclined or don't know better, yeah. uh, they do that, yeah. you know, and they laugh. They find it, the feminism mm. uh, funny instead of appreciating it as an art form. Yeah. Uh, that's why we wanted to run full marks to Webavi, who actually worked tirelessly on Tota and Ranbir. At one point, I remember Ranbir calling me, he says, Man, I don't have this in my body. Mm. I don't have Kathak in my body. Like, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. He was really having a meltdown. Tota was struggling because Tota's not a dancer. Right. He's not a classical dancer. He's an actor who has rhythm. Yeah. He has party rhythm. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like, but he's on a Kathak's half halves and hand right. and everything right. in perfection. And Webavi is a perfectionist. Mm. She didn't let them go. They were, uh, Tota was rehearsing for six months. Wow. Six months, months non-stop in Kolkata. Non-stop, he had a teacher come and teach him. Ranveer uh, rehearsed for over a month and a half, just for that one and a half minute clip. And of course, the song that followed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like mainly for the, the get it. clip. Because he, he found it very, he's saying, this is possibly the most challenging thing I've ever done. Uh, so finally, when it's getting this applause, yeah. it's very gratifying for them yeah. because they put in the work. Yeah. We can see, but they have to, you know, absolutely execute. And you know, that is not easy. So that scene was about the subversion, you know, yeah. of also about, and going back to ki hunar ka koi gender nahi hota. Correct. You know, and Correct. that's why I think that you have a kind of a feeling of some kind of pride and joy when you see that moment. Like, what did you feel when you saw it? Just like the joy. Yeah, yeah. Just the yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah. It's a heart. Yeah, yeah. You know? So uh, that's what it was. And, uh, and as I said, a lot of it came from my own, um, I, well, I wouldn't even, even call it traumatic. It wasn't that traumatic to me. It was just like, like my dad was okay with me yeah. dancing. The mm. wise in the world. Yeah. My dad was so... But it just stayed with you. It stayed because I'm like, my dad would clap and applaud. Mm -hmm. and he was such a... You As know, he should. Maybe he didn't know what he was reacting to. I don't even know whether he realized that he was, you know, that at that time in the in the late 80s, late 70s, early 80s, that his son was dancing to all these songs. It could appear really like unusual yeah. is the word, but yeah. he never thought it was. Yeah. Because it wasn't. You know, but kind of my all-time favorite moment, and, and spoiler alert, everybody, this is going to be a spoiler-filled conversation, um, was the kiss yeah. between Dharamji yeah. and Shabana. Yeah. Okay, I did not see that coming. I don't think anyone did. Yeah. There was an audible gasp. 
Yeah. All right. Everybody was like, oh, uh, like that. Yeah. Okay. And it was just so lovely because you're acknowledging that desire and love has nothing to do with age. Of course. And and cinema, everywhere around the world is notoriously ageist. Uh, it is about like only young people get to feel a certain way. And right. You're, you're just sort shut of up, old man. All of that and saying no. Look at these two. See what it. Uh, was it hard to convince either actor? No. <laughs> Shabana ji is a trooper. Yeah, she's yeah. A, she's a master actor. Like what an actor. She's a bop actor, as they say. Like you know, like. <laughs> She, I told you, there was no, never even a, like a, like there was no debate. There was it's no so interesting that a non-screen like, kiss is still such a big deal. Yeah. Two great veterans just doing, performing with absolute aplomb. No yeah. questions asked. Mm. Robert De Niro and Meryl Streep kissed? And yeah. They're old. They can't, can't do that. I've always seen, firstly, one of my all-time favorites is Abhinav Jaujhodke. Absolutely. And, like, and, uh, there is no greater love song. Yes, there is. Kiddi Labi Bhara Nahi. So, uh, it had to be that song. It had to be their song. Mm. Because that's what she says in the dialogue. Okay, you know, Mall Road Pe wo Walks, Hum Dono Ka Wo Re Run, Hamara Wo Favorite Gana. Um, uh, it had to be Habina. You know, that became the thematic kind yeah. of connection of Rocky and Rani as well. Um, it, was the, it was just glorious to see them mm. and to see Dharamji. And you know, at one point I said, let's go Manmohan Desai on this. He stands up and he sings and he walks, he's on a wheelchair. But you forget and you don't question it. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah, yes, I'm just saying. I never, just, I never thought about that. There is, and to give a little tiny bit of shock, I have Ranbir looking at him walking like this, but you'll never go there, I won't go there. He's done it, he's looked at him, oh, what happened, how's he walked up? He walked up, he only walks up for Shabana Ji twice. Right. When he sings Aaj Mosam and when he sang Abhinav Jal Chorke. Yeah. The rest is on a wheelchair. So I'm like, my logic was love makes him walk. <laughs> you know, love can move mountains. Why can't it make a man walk? Um, and everybody said, but logically, would I said, you know, is this scene logical? What's happening in this moment? In the middle of a drawing room of a palatial, over the top, Grandhava paradise, this man is singing Abhina Jao Chhodke to a past club in front of his whole family and she is singing along not caring that the wife is also there. So I'm like, there is no logic to the situation. Go with the beauty and romance of it. Yeah. And maybe we'll get away. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's how what it was. Yeah, yeah. And the lines, Karan, you talked about Ishita being a, a great writer, but for me, the best line is the Gajini or such. <laughs> okay, we have fallen off our chairs laughing. Uh, you are inherently very witty. Yeah. You know, you're, you're a very funny person. How much of you is in these characters? A lot of the, the, the uh, characterization, the coming in, like uh, like I've met Rani's of my life. Um, I've uh, seen a lot of Rockies, you know, uh, in the world. Um, a lot of them are somewhere or the other uh, born within me or an observation of mine, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, a lot of those lines also were like in that part of the writing process uh, and they came easily because that was the world of the film. Mm -hmm. um, but I give full credit to the writers because uh, I was very careful that we needed, um, while we needed a commercial lens, we also needed a progressive and a woke lens. Um, so it was a great combination of uh, Shashank, who brought in so much of the commerciality into the yeah. film. Sumit and Ishita brought so much of the sensibility and the, the correctness, the political correctness. Um, Ishita was very, very cognizant of the fact that, you know, we can't land up, you know, uh, we are anyway in stereotypical territory, let's not go wrong in any other way. So it was a great energy of writers that came together. Like I would work with them all together in a heartbeat because they brought so much to the film. Uh, but it was worrisome because uh, we were dealing with a lot of characters, yeah. you know. Yeah. So there's even Golu as in Gayatri's character. I've been fat, I've seen that. Uh, you've been fat, show him, you know what that feels like. You know, people just say the most, like I feel when you're very fat or very thin, it's both, you get shamed either way. Like I remember my friend Niranjan Ayangar, who's very thin, telling yeah. me, they said, you know, everyone goes on about fat shaming. There's also thin shaming, mm. you know, because people keep saying, you're so thin, you're so thin. It's not a compliment after a point, you know. Mm. It's like, you so both, both shaming yeah. is shaming. Yeah. Yes. So I, I felt like all these characters somewhere came from a part of me or a part of my uh, observation pool. You know, Karan, a lot of commentators, a lot of critics have said that this, the film is like that line that uh, Rani thinks for Dhan Lakshmi ki... Soch nahi swad Correct. Yeah. But I would 
argue that your soch has always been nahi yeah right for 25 years karan and it's it's a really interesting sort of dissonance in your art that your influences are sort of the kind of maharatis of yeah. commercial mainstream right it's raj kapoor it's yash chopra yeah. it's suraj bajatia who debuted just a few yeah, years yeah, before yeah. you did but right from the beginning you've peppered it with you know little sort of hat kid right mm-hmm. you push the envelope your women have agency you introduced queer love even if it was just yeah. as comedy uh, you ha- talked about a woman's pleasure in your short is this something that you struggle to balance like you're talking about like you have to have it commercial but you also have to be politically correct because i believe that if you are messaging if you don't do it in in the packaging of a mainstream entertainer then how are you going to reach yeah. so many millions of people um if i made a film like a short like in a part of an anthology like i did with love stories bombay talkies uh where we talk about you know strong repressed sexuality or a woman's right to pleasure um compared to those how many people will see that compared to a big mainstream yeah. mm. you know film so i think you have to walk that tight rope mm. now when you walk that tight rope you can even fall off that rope mm. you know so i'm like it's essential that you keep walking on that tight rope and make sure that you don't so there will be things that you will do that perhaps like you look back and say are you know ye thoda wahan zyada ho gaya but it's all coming with conviction like at that point of time when shiti jo uh, turns around and completes uh, aaj phir jeene ki tamanna hai is complete um it's a complete uh, like um, what do you say a uh, suspension of belief mm. in that moment in a drawing room seeing a song uh you can laugh at it or you can clap at it yeah. one of the two i know can happen mm. that's the chance you take but it's coming from my space of subhash kai conviction you know where it's like a rebellion in love and mm. we're singing ji ha ji mohabbat ki 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 zamane se bagavat ki and you know minakshi and jacky sing that yes. in hero or, or you're like you know like pyar karne wale kabhi darte nahi jo darte hain wo pyar karte nahi and i agree i agree clapping in my head and heart on those sequences mm. so i'm like even the song uh, dindora is actually a leaf from that page yes you know yes. um it had to be just updated so i was like I had to do it. I had to just walk that tight rope, but also make sure that if I am messaging, I don't do it in something that may not be viewed in large numbers. But Karan, do you struggle with it as a storyteller when you sit down to create? Do you think about I can say this, but I can't say that? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Good question. No, not in this film. I didn't struggle at all. I quite enjoyed. the characters yeah i enjoyed all of them i enjoyed their back stories i enjoyed uh the people they were um i loved uh you know it was a, a the uh the struggle was uh where alia and i had to sit down and say how do we make this character likable and lovable because she can come across over opinionated and it's again to alia's genius that she actually made her character strong but also vulnerable yeah. in love and she's such a good actor she's that, fabulous is yeah. that she just brought that one so we struggled internally with projections of performances but there was never a point where i said okay i can't do this but i can do that i did everything i know what did i not do i went to the mountains for a love song i did a bansali ode i did a lip sync song with three with all the The, the the girls in the industry i uh, i did like i mean i did everything i could have ever asked for i put up big sets and i put had dancers abund- in abundance uh i what did i not do i did everything <laughs> i love about mainstream indian cinema yeah. uh i never pulled any stops yeah. like at all like i went for the jugular uh but within that hmm. i i felt like there was a story to tell that would be deeply impressionable hmm. and hopefully resonant uh with um, a large section of society you know uh, the other of course great sort of propelling force in your cinema is love yeah you know like rocky says love hai to sab, sab hai, hai right yeah. uh, and all the men and women in your films are yearning for love getting over love falling in love i remember last year when we talked uh, after your birthday you had said to me that the one regret that you have is that you weren't very mindful of your own person yeah. like mm-hmm. that that you didn't sort of pay enough attention yeah. to it and of course this is completely amateur <laughs> psychoanalysis <laughs> is there a connection between that and the love that sort of 
flourishing flamboyant love we see in your films. I think you live vicariously. Mm. Cinema uh, filmmakers have that luxury of living vicariously through their, um, I think, incomplete dreams. Yeah. Uh, you know the love story that you want. Uh, in your own life, when that doesn't happen, you have the luxury of living vicariously through your movies. Um, the problem is that I'm only living vicariously. <laughs> like, no, I'm not being able so to sad. translate that into finding my own. You can find uh, love, Kieran. Love story, and uh, as they say, uh, like you say, age has nothing to do with love. So you never know. At age 51, it might happen. But uh, glad to hear him I say that. The, I at least. I don't think you this, can fall in love in your 50s. Uh, Thoughts? This massive platform to express everything that lies within, you know, that, you know, I think cinema really offers that to you. Writing, creating you? content, creating characters, yeah. oh. creating those magical looks between two characters. Um, it, it satiates um, that void within me, mm. uh, which lies empty yeah. right now, you know, and I feel like the love that I express on celluloid is my love story. Um, my love story with cinema is perhaps the biggest love story I'll have, you know, and I may not translate into a functional romance in the real world, but I'm like... Prince so said me. that about his music. Uh, you know, he I said his songs were his children. Did he have children? Well, he did. Okay, that died very shortly after birth. Really moved me. Yeah, very, very tragic. When Rocky is telling his family yeah. that, uh, you know, I am who I am yeah. because I don't know better. And, and you can't cancel everybody out, yeah. that there has to be some compassion, you know, we have to allow each other yeah. and not judge. Uh, those are not easy thoughts to make accessible, mm. right? These are not conversations we see every day in Hindi cinema. What was the challenge of writing that scene and Ranveer was so good at it? Oh, he was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he really, 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 really worked on that scene for like a really, he knew that was his, his big, big, big moment to yeah. shine. The thing was, I tried to, in my own way, as a filmmaker, and the writers, full credit to them, that scene is full credit to all the writers, uh, to kind of flip the, the, the cliched scene into on its head in some way. Mm. So the first thought was like, of course he's going to come and say sorry. But I'm like, collectively everyone thought, but why should he, not just while saying sorry, even talk about what his pains are like. Yeah. It's okay that they are offended. Yeah. But what about the times they offended him? Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and why should he not address that? So I'm like, everyone expected a typical when Tota gives his bit, which is warm and beautiful, and when he holds his mother's hand and he says, Honar ka koi gender nahi hota, you feel ke Rocky will go down and bend his knees, apologize, end of scene. Mm. That's not who Rocky is, though. That's not who I ever saw Rocky as. I saw Rocky saying that I screwed up, I messed up. But what about you guys? Yeah. Like, you know, like, I don't know better. Like, I I be old or cold, he bol sakte, black or black, he bol sakte. He says, you know, no, mu khonne se dar lagta hai, which is actually in that house, that is what is, it, it, and this is truly identifiable to a gazillion people. Absolutely. I have to keep lecturing my mother about these things right. because all wrong words come I out. I do it you with know? my husband. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> Yeah, well, your husband a lot more than I think my mother would <laughs> needs to be schooled. Uh, but, like, but you know, I just feel like at the end of the day, terminology yeah. is something that we are trained not because we created that terminology. That's the surrounding that we grew up in. Mm. Now, if someone was fat, people called me fat. Yeah. Nobody now today in an interview will say plus size. Yeah. We'll say vertically challenged. Correct. You know. Uh, Which we never said any. We of never this. said any of yeah. this. We will say like you know visually challenged. Yeah. yeah. We don't say, you know, you know, you know, audibly challenged. You just keep saying different terms because you're not, you're so scared to offend. Yeah. So that scene, I think, resonated with people because they're like, Are, yaar, he's in Chinese, ko Chinese bol sakte, ya, nahi bol sakte. he said, because he said, how do I order that he's in the country of Himachal, which is like, crispy chicken, chicken lana, which is like, because he was like, and then that goes to that scene had to be turned on his head. And he said, aap jo ho, aap mere upar ho, usse you know, what you think about it? You know, eventually, yeah. and anyway, I don't speak language either right English language and you laugh yeah. that's also shaming right you also be yeah. also language shaming me so and then of course he apologizes yeah. of course but I said it has to start in a way that you should laugh that was my brief I said mm. the first thing you should do is that you're singing so sober calm but let's bring in laughter before we go into emotion yeah and that was my endeavor in a lot of the scenes is to mm. break it yeah but that scene that it's 
for the for the people who understand it, it's a cancel culture scene. Yeah. But for the people who may not know about cancel culture, but still look at it, yeah, this is the right person. Right. You know. Yeah. This is the right. This is our side too. Correct. You know. You know. People get offended easily. They say, "Look, there are so many houses in this country that will say that drinking from the water is wrong." Yes. Why? 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 Why?
All these Looks nothing like Big B. Suddenly, when the album is dropped and you hear it, you start liking those movies, the songs now. Initially, there's too much pressure. You're waiting to feel that your first song is going to, you know, um, top the charts. And, you know, not every song can these days. It's tough. It's a really tough, crowded market yes. of non-film and film. And one song breaks through suddenly and you don't know why. And then you think. So I feel all the music, I'm very proud of the music of the film. And I believe that... I never bought into the criticism because I firmly believe the music is strong. It just will needed the film to kind of, you know, take it further. You'll find yourself humming those songs now. Yeah. And you will and those songs will have a life of their own. And they will have a long shelf life. They just needed the film. Yeah. Like that's why I'm feeling like none of our communication before this actually landed. It didn't. I was gonna ask you. So, when it didn't, and but, there was all that but current there was all that criticism of the chemistry. It was good in the song too. There was sort of his back flip, of his hair flip. I mean, I'm like, I didn't even notice that. I was like, did he really move his head? Okay, maybe I saw it later. And there was a direct comparison with obviously Charlotte. See, now, now, how can you, how can you live up to that? Right. But I still wanted to. You know, satisfy my urge to go no. to Kashmir and shoot a love song. I was like, "Abhi hoga comparison. Of course, hoga. Maybe yeah. he will make a song. I am doing it now. With not Shahrukh and Kajal now, with yeah. you know, with these actors, and you can't. Shahrukh is a legend. He created love in cinema. Yeah. Kajal and he are an iconic love pair. How can you even compare? You can't compare. But should I take away the fact that I don't know? I don't want to not do the song. I want yeah. to still do it. I'll try my best. You'll buy into it eventually, is my hope. So chemistry was, I was, I was like, yeah, chemistry pe upar problem hai, gaano pe upar issue hai. You know, they're feeling ki ye to na, ye silly film to nahi hai, stupid to nahi hai. Yeah, then yeah. I just felt ke, achha, I'm not being able to communicate. I had many concerned people messaging me and saying, why this is not working, that is not working, this is huh. not working. I'm like, also, it's a dream <laughs> sequence at that point. No, yeah, I, no. I never understood those criticisms <laughs> yeah. of that song, man. Uh, with which you don't know till you see the film yeah. contextually. And, uh, which we always say that when we act to a song. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I've said that many times. Maybe I like it more when also, I see the film. Um, an onslaught of being hated um, it gives you a very strong resilience. Mm. Yeah, so I feel like especially all three of you I in this movie. Um, for all of those weeks, it's the week before, mm. that had nothing to do with actually all the chatter. criticism to the chatter. That yeah. was not what was getting to me. Mm. What got to me was the fact that, oh my God, the film is going to be out. And some way, I know, I, I, I have to say that I needed the validation. Mm. I was feeling very vulnerable as an artist, as a human being, and as a, a person who's been in the industry long enough you know, I somehow felt like I needed this validation. I felt like I was... You are an artist, um, though. That I needed sense. it. Like, you know, it's like, it's like your body needs sugar. You know, you sometimes just, you know, when your pressure is low. Um, I felt like that validation was my sugar. It needed to kind of pump up because I've been... It's just been a weird couple of years. And uh, while we all put up a great show, you know, when we walk out into the world, um, there are so there is so much going on within you know me and my heart and my head that needed some sense of validation and feeling will i get it or not mm. is what gave me the anxiety mm. before the release mm. i was in as i well, the head of this interview i said i was trembling i literally was i was shaking i wasn't sleeping i was like up at night staring at my ceiling or what, trying to watch something that was just going to just, but I was just up and my closest friends Makes realized sense. that. Yeah. And I literally for the first time reached out to people and said, can you just be with me for these four or five That's minutes? That's great. Glad you reached out. I had like three or four like strong army members. You should know, always reach out. I just love his, like, right? he's always so transparent and honest. Bed, yeah. Because I was like a baby. Because I was, I told you, I found myself just weeping. Like at every given point of time, I was crying. Like, and I was like, tears were rolling down, and they, they didn't even know what to do with me. You know, because I'm this big boy, like 51 year old man, crying for no reason. Like, you know, I was like shivering. Like sh at the cast and crew trial, there were so many people, yeah. and at PVR, and I went up to the room and I just sat and wept. I don't know why, I just wept and then my Amrit, my friend, Aputlu, Aarti, Shetty, Pooja, they all just came and said, I, we had one group hug and they said, why are you feeling you've made such a good film? They kept saying, I said, no, I don't know, I can't express it, I can't show this side to my mom either. You mm. know, because my mother feeds off. Just make them more. 
And my mother feeds off my mood. Yeah. Like, I'm happy, she's happy. Yeah. Like, that's the way it is. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't show this vulnerable side to my children. They're too young to my mom. What am I going to do? And I'm like, and Apura was so strong. He was like a pillar. He would just come, keep coming to me and saying, like, you know, don't worry. Why are you worried? Why are you getting so hyper? And I was like, so I only had love. You know, I had so much love. Um, when did you breathe? This morning. <laughs> <laughs> this morning. <laughs> this morning, when I was sitting and uh, getting ready to come to you and uh, Eka, uh, Rocky, uh, Eka Lagani walked in and she said, God, the things that she walked in with her, so much love and, and I know the love was pouring in and all that. I was like, I said, yeah. I said, yeah. how do you feel? I said, I said, I feel, I feel happy today. I feel happy today. I like, I said, I'll, 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 I breathe today. I, I literally, Monday, the whatever the date is today, I don't even know, I'm so lost. Uh, 31st yeah. is, is the day I have, I, I took a deep breath and I said, I think, um, I think it's going to be okay. It is. You've done more than okay. No, but I, I'm like, I, I, I see I don't go by statistics. Or, it's my own feeling. Yeah. I feel so happy, yeah. <laughs> I, feel so, I feel so happy with all the pyaar. Like, you know, I feel like, what do I say? Can I just hold your hands? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so lovely. Yeah, I just, I, I, I don't know how to uh, react to this love. Like, I'm just so like, wow. <laughs> you know, I was like, mm, um, there's no better way of saying it. God, I'm going to get emotional. But I'm, I'm really saying it. It's like, uh, it just felt like, <sighs> yeah. How nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. And it is so lovely. It really is. I have one more question. Yeah. Where do they live after marriage? Mm, Pratyush, Pratyush, my colleague needs to know this. <laughs> so, um, very, very absolutely valid question to ask. I definitely think that Rani would not move into Ramadan paradise. Hannah? And I definitely think that the strategies would be okay with the fact that they would move. I think that the setup that, that they would move into a separate home because now they yeah. get along with each other's families well enough for them to create a world of their own. So in my head, neither does Rocky move to Rani's, neither does Rocky, Rani move to Rocky's. They have a place of their own. Uh, but in my head, I think Rani would do that place up. Yeah. Yeah. Better I'm aesthetics. I'm not so sure she would depend on Rocky's <laughs> aesthetics. Probably not. My, my also my uh, is that Rocky would not stop being Rocky. You know we discussed uh, uh, like a part two. You know, really? Like we, we used to chat about it. Rani, Alia, uh, Rani, I am um, Alia, uh, <laughs> me. Huh. And it was like, what's got to be a story? Because uh, these two deserve a spin-off. You know, they do. And, and I'm like, uh, okay, who knows? You know, I, we imagined a story. We actually have a kind of a story, but we don't know. We, I mean, this was too nascent of thought. But uh, definitely, I see Rocky and Rani living in somewhere in Delhi, mm. uh, but away from their parents. Because now, how American of you? The back seat driving <laughs> is being done by the family. They're okay because yeah. they're, they're at least in control of the front seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, what are you doing next? Holiday? I am going to sleep <laughs> for many days. Uh, and when I wake up, there's no sleep on me. I have films releasing. I have shows that are on there. I have to do coffee with Karan. I have to do lots of things. Are we getting another season? Okay. Yeah. Now so you're done with one so I jobs. kept. I don't know if anyone noticed. I, so nobody noticed that I was absent for four months. Like I took a sabbatical like for four months and then I just think that people don't realize because I'm always everywhere. You're always there? Yeah, so, but, yeah. I, but I was not there anyway. I was trying and I was wearing black and all full. Like you were not This was your low time? Yes, I was I was keeping it low. My orange shoes just came out today. <laughs> like I'm like, I was keeping it low. When was this? You see, nobody notices. See, you, you missed that my low key and like my complete low key, like staying away, not doing media, you know, not going with Rocky or Rani to any city visits. No one noticed my absence. I'm very upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, marketing vibe that just went down the drain just now because I was like somebody must have noticed nobody noticed it. Uh, you know, You're I was omnipresent, Karan. Yeah, but I, I wasn't anywhere. Like yeah. I didn't go anywhere. Now yeah. that I'm seeing it, of course, now you Now the penny's dropping. But right. like, I didn't go anywhere, and they were right. like, I said no, no, no. <laughs> I said we will come out if the film gets lots. and they're really going to be coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> and please do consider my idea of the fashion line of. Rocky and Rani. Rocky and Rani need a fashion line. They, they I mean, Manish Malhotra 
tells me that he has never received so many messages in I his entire anything, life. I want anything, and I don't even know how to wear a sari. No, but like he's like Karan, what is going on? Yeah. Like, people are talking about the saris in serious reviews. Like in serious reviews, the saris are being mentioned. Rocky's wardrobe is of course being talked about for various reasons. Yes. Um, like his designer wear somehow is equaled additional humor in the film. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like who else would match? The uh, car and the goat. The car and the goat. I it mean, like yeah, yeah. And I have to tell you that was a happy accident, but we're taking credit for it. <laughs> We realized only on set, and we're like, oh, <laughs> it was that. So yeah, it. so we'll we'll do a Rocky and Rani line. It's a good idea. And in terms of films, Karan, are you thinking of anything else? I'm writing, um, writing with a couple of writers, um, ideating between two things. Um, I don't want to take a long gap again. I yeah, really do. Feel, I feel what like. What is this seven years and all? See, two and a half years to went into dust, yeah. and then two years into the pandemic. Which so will then, get made? You yes, said yes, yes, yeah. of course. It's a passion project. Um, but I'm writing, I'm developing, I'm thinking, I'm absorbing, I'm ideating, all of that. But I won't take a long gap. This time I need to be back on a set because that's where I feel I really belong. Yeah. Good. Well, cannot wait to see it. And congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This Thank was you. so lovely. Great interview as always. She does a good job. Um, yeah, we, I, we've said it before, we'll, and I'm sure we'll say it over and over again. He's such a sweet man. He is. And I feel like I feel like the the man you see in these interviews is the man you'd see if you were sitting down and having breakfast with him, or you know, you you'd taken a walk in the park. I, I feel there's like no pretension. What you see is what you get. Yeah, I've. And it's such a sweet, sweet man. Um, I love the parts we got really personal about. Yeah. One. It's my favorite about part. his his um, anxiety, yeah, and needing to reach out to people, always reach out, and um, and admitting, it, admitting that for him the film he needed the validation, that even though they won't admit it, that's most artists. <laughs> I mean, that's why a lot of theater actors love theater so much. It's instant gratification, hopefully, <laughs> if it's good, or it's also it's instant good. regret as yeah. well. Uh, if no, it, you if do. It's not good. But. You do. I mean, that's that is the barometer by which you're measuring whether or not what you're doing is having an impact. Is is how well it's received or not. Still love doing what you do. Of course. Also, it's always better when you get the validation. Oh, a hundred percent better. And you're always everybody's nervous. Everybody's human. Yeah, you're always nervous as to whether you're auditioning or whether the project's done. You're always very nervous because you want it to be good and you want others to think it's good. You don't want it to be bad. And when you're when you're helming something like this, I'm sure the pressure on him was huge. When you add what a monumentally huge empath he is with his heart on his sleeve. Uh, I'm not. I'm not surprised that he was just crying nonstop yeah. and could hardly go to premieres. And yeah. I love. I'm the, happy for him. I love the uh, story about his uh, him dancing to these songs when he was a kid oh, yeah. and his father being accepting of that. That's one. One as a father, what a father should do. Uh, <laughs> it's sad that it's not a lot of people's story. It really is. Um, that that they want to be themselves and then they get pressured by the parents or family members or friends when they're younger into being ashamed of yeah. trying to be who, who they are. Uh, and that he brought that into the story mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was, it was really, really lovely. Um, <laughs> I was sad that we didn't have subs for their, I know there was the, so much, I feel uh, like a, I, English going on back and forth and then out of Hindi. It was and mostly English. when they were talking about dialogue from the movie that yeah. they said in the dialogue. Right, right, the right. Movie. <laughs> Obviously, um, so it makes sense. I just I wish I, I I got up some references of what they were talking about, um, but yeah, it was uh, a, a, a lovely, a lovely interview. I, you know, I I, I really appreciated the film, obviously, uh, for for many different reasons. Um, and if you haven't seen our review, obviously watch that uh, to see what uh, Rick said about the, the stuff he didn't like as much as I did. Lexi, Lexi's, Lexi watched it with us too, and she gives she gives yeah. her opinions. She as was well. said she was a little in the middle yeah. uh, of, of both of us. Um, but it was also uh, <laughs> it was also really strange uh, and something that you you just don't think um, think about because as an audience uh, you don't have to is the the fact that he has to it, the film was three ten. And it ended up being 250. So mm -hmm. he cut 20 minutes of this film. Yeah. And also some like parts of the songs. And like you don't, because as an audience, you don't have to think about that because you're not the editor, you're not the director. 
But they definitely have to think about it because they have to know if a film is lacking or not. Obviously, as we've said many times, so one of the worst things a film can do is bore you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, they had to, he thought he had to cut a lot of it. Um, and as, as they, I guess in PS2 or PS1, <laughs> Imani Ratnam had to, felt like he had to cut the songs as well. Mm, yeah. Which is weird. Don't yeah. do that, Mani. <laughs> because those songs uh, were absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, but it, uh, also, it was really interesting what he said about Renvir in this. Uh, one, I would love to know the backstory of how that happened, right? Um, it, it's obviously different because when you're the lead in a film, it actually does happen a lot where, where you're learning the lines basically before because you have so many and you don't they don't film in sequence. And so that actually happens a lot on set is like they don't learn the lines verbatim for this three-hour film front to back. They no. Get, they get the shooting schedule. No, and, and sometimes they, that can happen. I mean, it can happen. It shouldn't happen, but you can. You're going to get a call sheet, I presume. I don't know how the Indian film industry works. I assume it's pretty comparable. But you're going to get um, you're going to get a breakdown of what the shooting schedule is going to look like beforehand, but the definitives of what you're going to do, because it'll change based on what you get accomplished each day. You're going to get a call sheet that night. They'll probably email you the call sheet, and it'll show you what's happening. But even when you get the call sheet, two things can change. You'll show up to set and be given some different colored pages that are in replaced pages in the sh- in the shot that day because the writers made some changes. And you have to you're sitting in the makeup chair and they go, "Here are the new lines for today's scene." The other yeah. thing that can happen that apparently did is They've you get a call sheet for what we're filming, and then you show up and it's not the day you thought it was going to be. They yeah. they made a change. But he did. It was interesting about it is that it wasn't that he didn't know his lines. He knew his lines. Is that he wasn't mentally prepared mentally prepared and for, thankfully for the scene that right, they were doing, right? Which makes sense, and also love that for Ranveer as an actor, the fact that he's like, I I need this prep space. Too. I'm always reminded of Tick Tick Boom, and Andrew Garfield getting the call sheet for oh, the first yeah. day. I remember, yeah. and and it's the climactic moment for him, not giving anything away, and when when he's talking to Lynn, Lynn is giving him all of these deep reasons as to why they're filming it, and Andrew looks at him and says. We're filming this because this is the day you got the permit for Central Park. He said, yeah, that's exactly yeah. why we're filming today. <laughs> that's exactly what we're filming. <laughs> but the fact that Renfrew <laughs> needed that prep time to get his of course. headspace correct. Of course. Uh, and obviously, Karen being the director and producer is, is allowed to do whatever he wants. He's the one funding this. So. <laughs> and the unsurprising seriousness for everybody who gets upset with us about our love for Renfrew as a thespian. Did you hear all of the comments about how seriously... Runveer t- took this role. This could easily have been something where he just did look at the character and go, oh, it's me. I'm going to phone this in and take a nice payday. Yeah. And he doesn't do that. He, he takes all of his roles, I think, as seriously as any actor possibly can. I, th- I think he took this no less seriously than he did his role in Padmavad. Oh, yeah. No less seriously. Also, it was probably a more difficult role in many respects in comedy yes uh, for, in many respects because this can that like we, we've said it many times comedy is way harder than drama yeah especially when you are a a big bombastic character. exactly which you'll, you'll see if you haven't seen the review that's the primary thing for me was i had no problems at all with run and alia in fact i liked run and alia for me it was what she had mentioned about in particular the second half of the narrative getting as she said wobbled by 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 reason of some mm. other choices that were made mm. and That's just mine and a very small handful of people because I've read a couple of reviews. The majority of people love this film. And that may, I had, I'm one of them. I had, had some beautiful, stupid babies who have, you know, their wits about them and are mature point out, just send me messages of how much they adore the movie and it's what they were waiting for. And it just rekindled so much of their, right? And it was my partner. That made me, that made me very happy. And neither one of us were, mad and pointing out to the other person why you were wrong it's just that was what you like and this is what i like i just thought it in my head yeah exactly which is what you're supposed to do yeah inner monologue you're a fucking idiot outer monologue you're allowed to have your opinion of course see how that works Uh, (laughs) no you tip anyways sorry about that the uh the battery died but okay said it was exhausted yeah specific we're we're basically done with the uh what we're talking about i just wanted to come back and and say goodbye uh, hold on. <laughs> oh. oh, and the microphone stopped too. Good lord. Whatever. I think the all the equipment's exhausted. I'll just end it. All right. Just-